Hello, Fire Rider. Hey, K. Kimmy, how's it going? Hope y'all are doing well on this Thursday. You just finished your meeting. You made it in. Oh, I'm so glad you liked the season episode thing. It's a... Uh, it's something I discovered Apple wanted. And... It lets me... I, I don't have to wonder what number in 500 I'm at. I can just think, well, it's always going to be season, season 17 this year. And it's easier to find the number when it's like in the teens and lower. Hello, Underpoke. Good to see you. So yeah, I'm still marking somewhere on the file what the uh, episode number is, just in case I ever need it. But for now, yeah, it's the season, uh, season counting thing. I just have to figure out how I can go back and edit the existing files, but uh, without flooding everybody's RSS feed with old episodes. I don't think there's a way, unless things have changed. Hey, Helljack, I'm glad you're here regardless. Um, good to see you. Anyway, this is I Should Be Writing. My name is Mer Lafferty, if you don't otherwise know, and I do... Right now, I'm a chatting and podcast streamer. I want to get back into gaming, but it's not fitting with my schedule right now. So this is a podcast for wannabe fiction writers. I used to say by wannabe fiction writers, but then I published my first book and people told me I couldn't say that anymore. And while they're not the boss of me, I guess they had a point. Okay, Kimmy, my cats are disasters and I dreamed and had the worst bus ride ever, but otherwise I'm pretty good. <laughs> That's good. I had two... Over the weekend, I had two anxiety dreamings... Ugh, anxiety dreams about the same friends. Which was weird. So, don't really want to look too deeply into that. That'll just be... Awkward. Hey, do you have any idea why I might be having highly anxious dreams about you? What's up with our relationship that we need to talk about? Ugh. Oh no, phased out. I'm so sorry. Well, I hope that gets uh, ironed out soon. Or you have somebody in HR you, you can talk to. Although, unfortunately, they usually work more for the company, even though they say they work for you. JavaScript will be the death of me. Do not die from JavaScript, under Pope. Five-person company, there is no HR. Well, if he's done it before, it sounds like a uh, pattern. So it's definitely not healthy, but you probably have... I, I don't know the situation, but I'm thinking if he's done it before, then, uh, you know, it's like the parent who's like, I'm going to count to five. And the kid's like, what happens when you get to five? And then the parent gets to five and they don't know because they expected the threat to work. So, um, yeah, I entitled this stream Mommy and Daddy are Fighting because I think I've hit my limit in productivity books. I was reading, um, I was reading, sorry, Atomic Habits, which has been recommended to me many times and has been, uh, seems to be referenced a lot this year. It's only like two years old, but I seem to hear more and more about it lately. And that and the book Compound, Compounding Effects, I'm not sure I have the ebook, I'll look it up. But those two follow the hope that if you improve, by 1% and you keep improving by 1% after a year I don't know how the math works out after a year you'll be like 37% better than you were before I really don't know how that works but anyway um, looking for it come on I know I've got it the compound effect yes and you know it's that 
if you just put in a little bit more effort, then changes will come over time. It's like the healthy way to lose weight. You don't want a fad diet. You want to change some habits and watch it gradually come off. But people don't like that because they like instant uh, gratification. We all do. But the book, The Compound Effect, had a good example saying um, that if you're watching, an, you're in a really cold room and you've got an ice cube and it's sitting on a cold table, you're not putting your body heat into the ice cube. This is a metaphor or an example. This is not actual thermodynamics. But you get a, you're in a cold room with an ice cube and you increase the, the temperature from 28 to 29 and then 29 to 30 and so on. And nothing happens to the ice cube, even though the room is getting warmer. And then once you hit 32, it starts to melt. And so his, his, that's his example of how we feel when we start making some changes and nothing happens. It's, it's a gradual thing, but once things start to happen, they will happen. So I like that. I like the idea of, of compounding, you know, habit stacking and, and doing all of that. And the 1% thing, I'm trying to figure out how to add it, add the whole 1% effort to my day. There were examples of the things the British bike racing team did to improve their, uh, improve the team. Tiny little things, but they did so many tiny little things that they eventually made a championship team. Does that mean 1% more words written every day? Does that mean more marketing every day? I don't know. I'm still, I'm still trying to get through, get, get that idea pinpointed. So I have a I have a goal to increase all of my metrics, Patreon number, Patreon income, and podcast downloads by half again in a year. And I thought that was reasonable. That's, you know, when you break it down into month by month and week by week, that's not that much. But then I was talking to some people in the, uh, the coaching workshop I'm in, the setting goals workshop. And one guy said, he's trying to look at it in the 10 times point of view. Now the 10 times point of view seems to be the exact opposite of the 1% point of view, which is, yeah, you could try to do 1% better, but if you shoot for 10%, no, no, not 10%, 10 times. If you shoot for 10 times better, you're not going to get 10 times better, but you're going to get more than 1%. Considering how ambitious I've been with my projects, I'm thinking that more sets me up to try and fail a lot more. But it is an interesting, ambitious con uh, concept. Hey, Anne, it's good to see you. Phased Out says, had you not chosen to podcast heaven, I would not have discovered the joy of audiobooks, which I know now listen to about 30 novels a year. <laughs> uh, thank you. That's really sweet, Phased Out. I'm glad. Um, he's referring to some novellas I podcasted uh, for free back in 5 and 6. I guess what you, def yeah, Firewriter says, I guess what you define as failure, right? Yeah. But I'm thinking if I... If I have on my list of things to do this year, write two books on spec, write a, uh, write an uh, audio drama, and write the things I am contracted for, which includes two projects, no, three projects that still have edit passes to do, and then a new book that I'm under contract for. Now, I could shoot for all of those. That's really ambitious. And in this concept, it sounds like they think, well, maybe I'll finish two or one, you know, finish one of the big extras or finish two of the big extras even. 
but what I see is overloading myself, crashing and burning and failing on all, all fronts. I need to, I do have the book 10 times. I think it's called 10 times. I remember the cover is just a big 10 and a big X. I'm looking again. Talk amongst yourselves. If you're aware it's a process, but you set a huge goal, less than a huge goal is still win. Yeah, that's that's the point. But if you're if the huge goal d depresses you, it's it's harder to deal with. There's ten percent happiness. The ten times rule, yes. Now I started listening to this and it's Admittedly, I've gotten tired of the productivity and self-help books written by white dudes that are just A, I'm awesome, and B, you can be awesome too. All that stuff you think is holding you back isn't. And I'm thinking, I can think of some women who might argue with you. I can think of some people of color who might argue with you. I can think of some LGBT people who, were, who could argue with you. You know, you've got a dude over here and you've got a, a woman over here doing the same job but she's getting sexually harassed are they on an evil playing field equal playing field they are on an evil playing field but not really on an equal playing field because she has an extra level of difficulty to use John Scalzi's metaphor of playing a video game on easy so I got tired of this book because the the writer I was listening to the audiobook maybe watching it, maybe reading it is better, but the audiobook is very, come on bros, let's do something awesome, and not even taking into account class or socioeconomic background, just saying, just, you know, fight all your, your things that you think make you weak, shut up, stop whining, and yeah, there are a lot of books like that, and they're all by white dudes, so it's just, Open your eyes, dudes. Anyway, but the concept of the 10 times rule is to shoot for much more than you want or much more than you think you can get and then you will land further ahead of your modest goal. But I don't know if my brain works like that because I get discouraged easily. Another podcaster recommends having both an impossible goal and a bare minimum goal. Yeah, I was watching, I wish I could remember the guy. Um, I'm going to try to write this down. Again, my uh, practice of taking show notes as I'm doing the show will be more informative when I finally post it, but little moments of silence while I write stuff down. Anyway, there's a guy who does um, a sort of betterment self-help videos, and they're animated and they're really, really good. But one thing he says is uh, three goals, which is there's also one in the middle of what Kay Kimmy just said about impossible goal, bare minimum goal, because if you hit the bare minimum goal, you can at least write down that you did it. You did some exercise today. You did a push up, but that correlates to atomic habits, which says a bad workout is better than no workout because you're still going to get some benefit from it where you don't get any benefit of anything of nothing, where you don't get any benefit from nothing. So, literally, he's got, like, one jumping jack and then, like, a yoga video or a two-mile run. If you're feeling good enough for the two-mile run, then go. Actually, I think he was equating each one the same, the same thing to do, but uh, a different size. Like, run to the end of the street and back, or run a mile or run two miles, but... Anyway, if you hit that bare minimum goal, then things can look up. Because when you look back, you're not going to think, you're going to see, unless you, you know, 
keep a lot of details, but it's like if you're writing it down on a on a diary, whether you did it or not, then you're just going to see day after day after day that you did it and you're not going to worry. Okay, there was that one day I did one push-up. Um, all of these have habits. Still need to remember to do it. Which is often my problem. A lot of my daily habits are so ingrained that it's hard for me to figure out where I'd put a new one in. So I think, I mean, I do like the idea of being ambitious. And um, last week I decided I was going to do th two books and solidify my writing routine. That, those were my goals. And then by Thursday, I was feeling low and decided, okay, just the routine. That's all. That's all I want to do. If I get the routine, the writing will take care of itself because I'll be writing. And so the books will happen. That's not a guarantee. I might write something else. I might spend the whole year writing short stories. But I decided to split the difference and go for the one book and make a writing routine a little bit better. Maybe something like that for goals, a gradual increase. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I think I'm looking down at the stack of notebooks I've been using to make my goals. I don't know. On one, one hand, I feel very... New Year's resolution, Pollyanna, because all of this is happening at the beginning of the year. But honestly, I, I'm taking two, well, not courses, but I'm in a free Patreon group to talk about goal setting. And then I'm in the group I'm paying for. So it's, uh, I'm getting a lot of this goal stuff. Which is why I'm passing it on to you. I'm trying not to take all of, you know, steal from the actual course I'm paying for. And I don't want to steal from my the course leader. But I will talk about how things are going. And how the, uh, the goals are coming. I have other goals. I have exercise goals. I have a backyard decorating goal. Health goals. And streaming goals. So, all of that. Now I feel like I need to give that 10 times book a, 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 chance, a better chance, but really all I can remember about it is that guy yelling at me. Sometimes that works on people. Sometimes it doesn't. So that, um, that story I finished, my novella I finished on Tuesday, that, that was, um, the editor turned, turned it around in 36 hours. Like I turned it in early Tuesday morning and yesterday afternoon, <clears throat> I got the comments. So... Remember when I said that you need distance from what you write before you start editing it? I'm not sure I'll have that luxury. So I tried to give myself last night not to worry about the edits. And then today I emailed the editor and said we can talk next week. So this weekend I'm going to be planning out the edits. Which y'all know I love to do. If you are new, I'm or if you're listening, I'm shaking my head. No, I do not love edits. I love writing. I love being a discovery writer. I love taking the story where my mind tells me to go in that instant, which can deviate from the outline. And, you know, editors don't terribly like that. Hey, Wordathon, good to see you. How long is typically expected to process, respond to an editor's comments? That depends. 
It, it all depends on, yes, words are hard. Thank you, Kay Kimmy. Um, yeah, it, it depends on what the editor is asking of you. And I learned this year, or last year, whether there's a pandemic on. So, uh, you know, they could be asking for copy edits, which could, you know, take a couple of days. Or they could be as asking for major story rewrites, which would include adding 20, 30,000 words to the book, which could take two months. I, for my own... Because I know myself, and I know when I get the edit information, I will always bristle, and I will always be annoyed. And then I'll give myself time to have that feeling, and then I'll come back to it and approach it like a professional. So I have not looked deeply into the uh, edits, just in general what he was unhappy with. So, But I'm thinking he's going to want a lot of rewrites. Now granted, this is a novella, so you know there's only so many rewrites I can do before I take it over 20,000 words. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I just got to remember that my mantra is show up. And if I can just show up to get the edits done, the edits will get done. I need to make a button in my stream deck to say show up. That's my mantra for the year if you weren't here on Tuesday. Oh, you're welcome, Mordathon. I love the questions. You know, if, a, if, if, if you've got a short story... You should be able to turn that around in a couple of hours because if the editor wants huge, if the editor wants to suggest huge rewrites, then they're not going to accept the story anyway. You know, we've had stories at Escape Pod where we love the concept and we love the writing voice, but there's something so fundamentally broken that we don't think we could edit to make it better. So yeah, that's, uh, that's editing and I hate it. I hate it so much. I think it's, it's why I don't like watching my streams either. Don't, don't like listening to my podcast. I don't like looking at myself or watching or listening or rereading. Sometimes I'll reread like old things once I get really distant from them. So, but editing makes me take this thing that I just made and start poking at it again. And I've said, unless I'm offered Dan Brown money, I will never edit my Afterlife series, the series of novellas that Phased Out mentioned early. Um, oh, I didn't see Phased Out leave. I'm sorry, Phased Out. Hope you have a good dinner. Hope uh, hope things turn up for you. Turn Get better. Um, but yeah, as Phased Out said, the novellas that I podcasted, readers loved them. And agents were very interested in representing them. And no editor wanted them. And I rewrote that thing three times. I turned Heaven and Hell into one novel, rewrote it three times, and then I'm finally just like, I'm done. And then my next agent asked me, and I'm like, fine. And I, and I told her, I'm like, I don't want to do this. I don't think it's going to be any good because I'm so sick of this story. And then when she got my edit, she's like, oh, you really don't want to do this, do you? <laughs> Yeah, I tried to tell you. I don't want to touch this ever again. I'm done. I want to move on. And it's weird because I'm learning as a writer that, you know, people, especially when they just discover you based on one thing you wrote maybe a long time ago, and they want to know when and if you're ever going back to that world. And the idea is just, no. No. To me, I can't. No way. Um, it's it's hard to do that. You know, I, I had it in my mind that some some plots that I wanted to do for some old stuff that never got sequels. Hey, Sario, good to see you. 
for old stuff that never got sequels, but now I feel like my writing's evolved and I frankly don't want to go back and read the stuff that was existing to work on a sequel. Which is kind of sad because for playing for keeps, I had a really big Empire Strikes Back type ending. One of the biggest um, complaints of the first novel was that I made the main character too powerful. And I, I just wanted to say, if you gave me another book, that it was going to address that. Yes, she's too powerful and she was going to have a nervous breakdown and a lot of bad stuff was going to happen. But I never got a chance to write it. And now I don't know if I want to. I'm pretty sure I don't want to. I have other things. Matt keeps telling me to write a space deli story. I don't even know. He really got it, really got it in his head to do the space deli. Hello, truck poetry. Good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Interesting. My, uh, my software is saying I have zero viewers and yet people are talking to me. So that's very strange. Oh, well, I guess that means I can't get obsessed with viewer numbers until this is over. So how are people doing with writing this year? Looks like at least 15 in Twitch. Thank you, Truck Poetry. I hate to sound like an old woman here, but post-it notes used to be a lot stickier. At least I remember them. They're, I tried to label my journals and they're all, oh, they don't like the, the chroma key does not like yellow. Wow. Okay. Um, Sorry, did not expect that. Anyway, yes, all of my post-its are peeling away. That sounds like a memoir title. A not very good memoir title. I'm nobody, who are you? Are you nobody too? Thank you for the Shel Silverstein throwback. That's nice. That is Shel Silverstein, right? I memorized a lot of his poems when I was a kid. I got, the, I got to perform the Land of Happy on stage. I can still do it. Emily Dickinson? Really? Wow. All right. There, there's a Shel Silverstein that's kind of similar, but I guess, I guess it's not, I guess Shel Silverstein <laughs> is not Emily Dickinson. Hey, Indigo Quill, writing 500 words a day. That's fantastic. That's great. Are you working on one specific project or are you just trying to get the words down or you don't have to tell us what the project is, but it's like, are you working on a novella or a short story? An underpope just finished the novella. Five rejections under my belt so far this year. That counts for a yay. Let's see if that works in this overlay. It does! Hooray! And hooray for uh, Indigo Quill doing at least 500 words a day. Well done, folks. And I got to use my yay button, so that makes me happy. I realized when I was editing that uh, that applause was really loud last time. I hope it was better this time, because I can't hear it. I did, I think I pulled the, uh... yeah, I pulled the, I softened that a lot on the mixer. So hopefully the, the applause was not too overbearing at that time. Okay, good. Thank you, K. Kimmy. Yeah, it's a... You just gotta make the... It's, it's all persistence. Words are hard. It's all about persistence. Uh, Tom McHavitz tells the story of the 10-year-old who asked for a job at Walt Disney World the year it opened. And long story short, 
I mean, and he started doing performing and he started doing comedy bits and he would do comedy bits in clubs with very few people. And apparently one time he did it where nobody was. He did his whole stage thing and nobody was in the room. It's kind of like uh, streaming with no viewers, I guess. But except it's worse because people are actually there with you or not there with you, as the case may be. Anyway, uh, it turns out it was Steve Martin. And that was the whole perseverance thing. Because, you know, there are lots of people who, if they had done a show and nobody, nobody showed up, they would quit. I mean, some people want to quit when they have a signing and nobody shows up. And that sucks. Truck Poetry got about 1,500 words last Friday in some word wars, writing an essay. Not had a ton of creative fiction ideas of late, so may need to do a brainstorming session at some point. Well, good luck with that. It's, uh, there are tons of prompts around the web, or you could do some fan fiction. I appreciate and endorse fan fiction because it's, it's like a safe, mostly safe place to work on your writing skills and you don't have to worry about every single aspect of the story if you're doing an original one. If you're not good with setting, then you've got you know, the, the Millennium Falcon or Tatooine. That setting's already done. So place your, your story on there. If you're not good with characters, well, then take... Star Wars is the only thing coming to mind. I don't know why. Um, Princess Leia and uh, Chewbacca. And you know who they are, so tell a story about them. Alternatively, you could tell a... St you could tell a you could tell like the story of Harry Potter, but put different characters in different roles. I mean, there's there's so many things that fanfic does that's like uh, training wheels, sort of. And no, I'm not saying fanfic's only good for training wheels. I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm, eventually someone's going to hear this and going to get pissed off, but I very much respect... Uh, people who do fanfic as long as they abide by the two rules which are don't sell it and don't send it to the author that you're that created the original IP hey Frigg's daughter good to see you fanfic is good period yeah uh, although the reason why I said mostly safe is I was hearing um, I think it was Cypher of Tear was podcasting last night and was talking about, or yesterday afternoon, anyway, yesterday at some point, um, and was talking about she wrote some Dragon Age fanfic and someone got mad and wrote her and asked her to change it based on his headcanon of what the character is, which is just so bizarre. I'm still, you know... The, the, the sense of entitlement people get when they read stuff, it's alarming. I mean, that's like, that is huge entitlement because, you know, so the characters didn't do what you wanted them to do. Well, write a fanfic story and make them do those things. Don't write the author and yell at them. It's almost like the insurrection two weeks ago. Like, what? Literally, what were you planning on achieving there? I am getting a phone call and I'm going to have to take it. So I'm very sorry. I'm going to need to do a BRB um, screen, but I'll be back.
And I am back. I'm very sorry about that. That was a... Uh, I hadn't talked to my mom in a while, and my daughter's leaving for college shortly, so I figured I'd better take it. So, you know, you're on, you're on a live stream, and your mom calls. <laughs> but, uh... Oh, thank you, Indigo Quill. Uh, she's talking to my daughter now, so... Uh, but I'll tell her. I'm glad y'all like the BRB screen, especially since I hadn't done anything specific to it, so... But it still looks good. So what else do people want to talk about? I was talking about how much I hated editing, but I know people who love it. They really, really love it. They, the, the act of writing is awful, but the art, the, the act of, well, you could say the art of editing and polishing it and making it something into something coherent is wonderful. They love that. Unfortunately, I don't see it like that. Oh, thank you. I just got handed my phone back. So, um, but yeah, does anybody want to talk about anything? Because I'm just jawing here. Probably shouldn't say that on the uh, RSS feed. That seems inconsiderate. Ah. Sorry, it wants me to hydrate. Okay. I came with water today. So I was, um, <clears throat> if any of you are also listeners to the podcast via RSS or my website, or Patreon actually, um, I got off my schedule big time because of, uh, No, I did not redo my evil Nomer advice. I will get to that in a moment because there is there is an update there though. Um, sorry, I lost it. Oh, by the way, I had insomnia again this morning, <laughs> but uh, better off than I was on Tuesday. So, right, I was talking about the existing episodes beyond the first two of the year is I streamed them and I streamed them on the right schedule but I did not post them in the feed because that was extra work that I didn't have time to do because I was writing. So yesterday I got three episodes and two two I Should Be Writings and I'll come in again. Three episodes of I Should Be Writing and two episodes of Ditch Diggers ready to go into the feeds. Um, Patreon should have started getting them yesterday, and the regular RSS feed will start getting them today. So I am going to be catching up, because this one should be going out tomorrow to Patreon. Today to Patreon, tomorrow to, I don't know. It's, it's, for some reason, I'm having trouble juggling the... You push B farther apart because you're focusing entirely on A. So you push B into the days where you're supposed to do something else. And so I'm getting better at prioritizing overall, but still, I'm like, so do I put out this episode when I'm supposed to put it out and double up with one of the previous episodes and then people will get technically a previous episode after that? Yeah, I think I just talked myself into posting it on Tuesday. Okay, that's good. Redo me evil mer advice. I have not done that yet. Um, but thank you for reminding me. But I did get, um, I did buy a bunch of fake mustaches on Amazon today. So by next Tuesday, maybe Monday, we'll see how early the mail gets here. By next Tuesday, I should have evil mer programmed and the mustaches for me to tell you the evil mer advice. 
So, uh, what is my favorite part of the writing process? That would be writing. Daydreaming and brainstorming is easier because it really requires very little effort. But um, when I'm writing and I get an idea about where the story is going to go while I'm writing, that's the best feeling. It's, it's such a good feeling because it makes me feel confident about the fact that I'm, I might be good at this thing that I'm trying to do. And granted, a lot of times I will have that, you know, what I mentioned last time, the 35,000 word mark of, oh God, this sucks. But there are still places in it where I'm like, yeah, I was pretty clever there. Sometimes I will put down um, little clues and I won't know what they're referring to. And later on in the story, I almost always figure out what it's supposed to, wh where my subconscious was going. For example, I decided in, in my most recent book, I decided to reference a character's therapist and never the therapy sessions, but just what she thought of her therapist. And I didn't have any plans for the therapist. And then about halfway through, I'm like, that's where he goes. Okay. And those kinds of things are exciting to me because I will be laying little plot seeds. And, you know, you can lay... It's so easy to do. And if they don't work, it's so easy to take out. For example, like, um, people are talking and someone says, yeah, I don't talk to my father anymore. And then they go, just like in conversation. And then they go on and talk about something else. And then if you, if there comes a point in the story, your, your, your hindbrain will be thinking, that father, why don't they talk to their father? What's going on in the story that could be connected to not talking to the father anymore? And you're not consciously thinking this, you're just writing. And then later on, something will hopefully hit. And you'll think that's where the father goes. And really all you've done is did a, a throwaway of, um, I don't get along with my father. I don't talk to my father anymore. So it's, uh, um, that's my favorite part. It almost feels like <laughs> it's so hard for me to say that I have self-confidence because I, ha I don't have self-confidence in saying I have self-confidence, but clearly I have self-confidence because I am confident enough to build my wings as I'm falling down off, falling off the cliff. And I have, I'm confident enough to jump off the cliff and still be building my wings and s figure out I'll probably catch a draft before I crash on the rocks. It was a very violent metaphor for writing a story and not having an outline, but... I stand by it. Looking forward to the evil Mur advice. Thank you, Under Pope. I'm sorry again. Um, if you're new-ish to the stream, the channel points will unlock various things, like hydrate, but they will also unlock... You can get evil Mur advice, and I'll give you terrible writing advice. Just awful. But unfortunately, I didn't, I haven't migrated that, those, those pieces of text from one computer to another. So it's not here and it's not programmed into my stream deck to be at my fingers, at the tip of my fingers kind of thing. Have I considered getting someone to help with the editing and posting of the podcast? I have. It's... It might work better now than it did because before when I was, when I was doing the, um, just any time podcasts, I felt additional stress instead of a relief of stress because I knew that I had to get the 
po- get the file into my producer before, you know, when it would be a good time for him to set aside time to work to do my work. Like me, I could just podcast whenever I wanted and produce when I had the time, but he had to take my work and plug it into his day. And for some reason, that stressed me out. So I took back the production through no fault of his own. Um, But now that I'm doing it on a regular basis, a scheduled regular basis, that might be worth looking into again. Thinking about it. Um, Yeah, what I'd really like is someone to go through and clean it up for YouTube. But that's so much work. You know, I like I like the idea of doing it myself, but I don't know if I have that kind of time or capacity. Because the podcasts are running about an hour now. Twice a week. So that's a good bit of, good bit of uh, content to sift through. I don't know why my watch just told me to take my medicine when I take it in the mornings and the evenings. Technology, man. Um, you guys really want me to drain this water, don't you? I will remind people that if you want to ask me a question and you can't think of one right now, a good way to ask would be to do it in the Discord if you're a Patreon supporter. Uh, you can learn more about that at patreon.com slash mightymer, or you can send me one on Twitter at mightymer, or just email me mightymer at gmail.com. I like answering questions because sometimes I can't think of an hour's worth of content. So, and it also lets me talk to you guys directly. So that's fun. But yes, always open for more questions. What was I going to do? I had a plan. Crap. I don't know. I am... I think I should probably close it now because my sleepy brain is is starting to shut off. I sent a question via email a few weeks ago. Did you answer it? I missed a couple of episodes. Possibly. Um, if you can... If you have access to it, can you forward it to me right now and I'll take a look? And I apologize if I did miss it. Um, oh, I didn't. I have missed one. I apologize. Um, Dinah writes, uh, you asked about writing groups in your podcast. I'm a member of Apex Writers. David Farland runs, runs it. I love it. It isn't free, but it's worth every penny. It would be great if you were... Um, If I was interviewed to talk about going from wannabe to published, so I don't know if you're saying uh, you want someone to interview me or me just to talk about it. I'm I'm not sure what you mean. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm happy. If if you really like this podcast, you can go back into the um, into the the archives. Uh, also, in the one dollar Patreon level. You can go back to the archives and um, get the sorry. Get the I should be writings around that time. Started selling short stories, I think, in two thousand six, and then my first novel I sold at the end of two thousand eleven. It came out in thirteen. So um, there's that question. Let me see if I can search for you under Pope. Darn it. I 
I am confused. Why isn't it letting me search my... I'm not seeing it at all under Pope, which is bizarre since I archive everything. Hmm. I may have to look into this. I'll look into this, and uh, if you do have a chance to mail me, re resend it to me, do that. And I apologize. That's not great for me to have done so. Yeah, weird. Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll look for it when I'm off stream. Oh, there it is. Okay. Sorry. I'm reading it. I finished the first draft of my novel and got great feedback from my crit group. Now I'm really excited about revising it because I think it's a solid concept and I got some solid feedback. However, it has major flaws that probably mean a complete rewrite is in order. And I wonder if I should re-outline. I'm a fan of the save the cat method or just dive in and start rewriting. It seems that whenever I start outlining, I feel like I should write. Whereas if I start writing, I feel like I should outline or should I put this novel aside and work on another one for now? I think you should revise it. Um, and remember you, now that you've finished it, I would not say this to people who had not finished something, but because you have finished it, you can, you can go from outline to writing and back again. I mean, I've found... One time I got stuck in the middle of a story and, and I hadn't outlined it all. So I started outlining it from the beginning and what I'd already written. And that helped me keep going after the part, part where I got stuck. So I was actually outlining something new while I was writing. And, you know, if you, if you get in there and you're writing and you think, maybe I should look, this, look at this in an outline, why not switch over? If you're nervous about, I mean, that, that it's possible that could break up your concentration. Um, if you're nervous about it, then I'd probably say outlining first. And maybe I'm just projecting because that's what I'm planning to do. I'm planning on getting, taking my novella and outlining it and then putting it beside my original pitch and seeing where things need to change. Um, but the outline will take you less time for sure. So either at the same time or I'd say outlining first. But again, whatever works for you. So give one a try. You can even just flip a coin. Give one a try and then give the... Oh no, you already said that. Sorry. You said you tried, when you try writing, you want to, okay. I think maybe you, you're going to have to stop doing, um, stop switching if it's not working for you. So, hope that helped. If you have any further questions, uh, go ahead and send me a follow-up. Be happy to talk about it. I don't know why I don't have your email anymore. That's, that's distressing to me. So, thank you for resending it, because I remember I got it. And... Maybe I filed it in the wrong place? I don't know. It should be, if, if I filed it somewhere, then search should find it. I don't know. So um, I am going to sign off because we are almost at that hour mark. Um, have some thoughts and questions, but not really well formulated. What's the best place to drop for you? Email or Discord? Um, probably email despite what just happened to <laughs> under Pope's uh, email that hasn't happened before I don't think um, sometimes if we if it's if it goes in the discord people will start talking about it which might help you immediately you can also do both um, because other people will be able to see it in the discord and they may offer help before I stream again 
But if you want to make sure I don't miss it, then uh, email's the best way. So what's really funny is I wrote down my end of stream stuff and then it's somewhere in these books. So I'm trying to do like uh, another self-help book I like is The Checklist Manifesto where they talk about even breaking things down to little bitty steps and making, making a list of them and going over the list even if you think you know how to do it is the best way to actually properly get stuff done. And he starts every chapter with a horrific story about people who either failed because they didn't do follow the checklist or succeeded through amazing odds because they did the checklist. So I'm trying to come up with a couple of checklists here before and after. Um, so I am glad you guys showed up today and thank you all for dropping by. Um, I have credits I'm very excited about doing.